Hi, everybody. John Haldy here with Haldy Tech, and I'm joined by Jeff Mikan, the CTO of Ebo Pro. Jeff, how are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? Very well, thanks. I'm excited to have part two of our uh, Tech Palooza for line hall contractors. Thanks for taking time out of your day for this. Oh, no worries. So last time we were together, we talked a bunch about the basic steps of going to the cloud, taking advantage of Microsoft and Google and other things for some of the sort of basic blocking and tackling that can make everyone's lives easier. Uh, how would you like to start today about talking about going digital? So, so I think the first one is really how to kind of build upon, right, moving that file storage into the cloud, and that's moving your papers into the cloud. Right. right? So, so that not only can you get access to all your emails and, and documents you got emailed to you, but you can also start moving your pictures and stuff into the cloud or, or your documents locally scanned. That's hard though, for people who are used to having file drawers and going to the source of truth in the file cabinet and that kind of thing, right? It, it is emotionally hard, but I'll go ahead and tell you by the, by the time you implement it, it is also emotionally freeing um, because you kind of get that clutter away from you. And, and, and with current searching technologies, um, even if you kind of throw it all into one folder with a good search, you can pull up all the related information. So I'm going to play contrarian for a minute. I like my paper. I like to be able to put my hands on it and know it's there. Why should I go digital? Correct. Well, so one of the benefits of going digital, right, is I have remote access. So I'm not at the house and FedEx calls up and says, hey, so-and-so CDL expired. And you go, no, it didn't. It expires in two years. You misread it or first advantage put the wrong year in, right, when, when they entered it in. Um, and you can kind of send that, you pull it while you're at dinner, right? Pull it down and send it to them and say, no, here's his copy of CDL. Now that may not get you through all the hoops that you need to get with FedEx, but that gets you out of that. Okay. Well, I got to stop what I'm doing everywhere and immediately drive home to my papers and, and dig through my file and find it and send it. And I'm not saying get rid of paper files, right? The, the HR person in your office probably will never get rid of all her HR files or his HR files. The idea here is just to get a digital copy up there so that if you do have a natural disaster or you're at that restaurant, right? You're, you're out with your spouse. You have access to that and you can address that there and you don't have to kind of end your life because FedEx called. Well, I would take it further. I'm going to break character here and not be the pro pro paper person because the truth be told, I have a printer behind me. The only time that thing starts up is when I need to print something to sign it and then scan it and send it back to someone via email. And Correct. I have eliminated as much paper as from my life as possible. And I agree with you. It's great. Uh, but I would say it's not just for when FedEx calls. It's phenomenal for when your accountant says, hey, I need to document this and it's all electronic already. You can just give your accountant access and let them dig through it. Correct. Um, and, and, and along those lines, it's the question comes up, maybe you don't spend the time to archive the old files, right? Maybe you leave those old files in, in, in the file cabinet and don't spend the time to kind of dig through that and archive them bit by bit. The scenario comes, hey, for new hires, right? Let's scan in all their documents. And then when you do that annual review with a, with a driver, that's when you take their files and, and, and scan those in. And there's some really nice scanners out there for computers and even nice scanning apps for mobile phones that really streamline it and make it a kind of a no brainer to start moving down that path. Yes, there's some super high speed scanners, all that kind of stuff. And you could either buy or rent one. But once you get over the hump, like that one, unit behind me, that's a color laser printer that scans super fast with a feeder, prints super fast. And I think it cost me 400 something dollars. See, I, I'm, I, I've gotten enough paper coming to me that I, I stepped up and got the pure scanner from, was it the snap scan from Fujitsu? And I completely love it. It rips through a stack of paper, double-sided. Um, I don't have to fight the, printer all in one combination. That's not to say my printer is not also a scanner, but at a touch of a button, I can literally press a button and it scans it immediately to my cloud drive. 
Now, what about if you're used to this piece of paper goes from my mechanic to me for approval, to a manager for review, to a bookkeeper for entry, and then down to the files. What if you have a workflow like that? Is it easy to adapt to that digitally? So, so I mean, at a minimum, I would say scan it before it goes to the files, right? That, that's the step one. This, it, the other steps you start looking around, around right? Editing that PDF because the, the mechanic probably sends it to you in a PDF or he has it in his system and he, he sends it to you in a PDF. Um, the app that I kind of recommend for iPhones is TurboScan. Um, it's, I don't know, three or four bucks for the, you can buy it, you can get the free one and then buy three or four bucks to kind of unlock all the features. Um, it allows you to kind of scan it in, it all creates a PDF. And I think you can even sign it on the PDF. And I've heard that there are some very inexpensive tools that once you get this thing into a scan form, you can set up Correct. rules that say this now has to go to this person and this person for signature, and it doesn't pass go until both people have signed off. Correct. And, and you, you, you could work with an IT guy to kind of work that into your, your Microsoft or Google, because I'm pretty sure Google has a, Microsoft is a flow solution or power apps. I think Google has a, as a counterpart, if you kind of work that path and you want to work that flow, um, the other one is just kind of keep it in a PDF in the email and you kind of email it back, um, right? It, it, you don't have to go all digital instantly, right? You can just start slowly moving your world there. And as you move it, right, it becomes a little easier and a little easier, right? We're not trying to boil the oceans all at once. You're just trying to boil a pot of water at a time. But I heard from a contractor who bit the bullet and did this, and they found a solution on Google. It was a third-party signing tool that had some workflow stuff in it mm -hmm. that they didn't realize how heavenly it could be because he, as an owner, needed to review and approve invoices before they were paid. But he can Correct. be in Kansas City, and now they have an outsourced accounting bookkeeping person who's in Georgia. And their mechanic, because they have multiple terminals, can be in different locations where all this stuff gets reviewed and approved that the work was done to their satisfaction. Like this all bounces around and the paperwork doesn't have to go around from one place to the other in, in FedEx envelopes with a big pile of stuff waiting for processing. Correct. Oh, yeah. And the more you streamline it, the, the easier it becomes kind of for all parties involved. Do you know who, what, what that package was? I will find out and, and okay. we'll put it in the notes for this thing. Yeah, we'll put it in post-production. Um, but it was, you know, it, and think about it. If you're the owner listening to this and you're like, wait a minute, okay, now I've got remote. Well, let me tell you what's even better. When you go on vacation, if there's such a thing in your world, you can take a laptop or a phone and do this stuff from the beach and work doesn't come to a stop waiting for you to get back to sign paperwork. Correct. Um, so, so that's a huge plus for going digital. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so, so no, good, good stuff there. What else do you think folks need to understand as they think about going digital with this? I, I, mean, I think it all builds upon kind of what we brought up last time, right? As you go digital, right? You get all the free backups, retention, um, protection, searching capabilities that we talked about last time. Yeah, and, and to give you all a sense of scale and cost on this, um, I went digital for what we do years ago and for my own personal stuff. And I think I'm up to something like 30 gigs or 40 gigs worth of stored data. And I've been, I'm a hoarder when it comes to information. And I pay $20 a year for 200 gigs of Google storage, like a dollar yeah. and a half a month. Correct. If you're worried, don't worry about the size as long as you're kind of sticking to pictures or documents. Um, the size only starts blowing it out when you start doing 4K video, that type of stuff. And years ago, I was the person who was sitting there making a weekly tape backup and taking that off site in case the office burnt down. The paper's gone. The tape backups are gone. Right. The zip drive things, they're all gone. <laughs> Remembering to do all the crap is gone because the cloud services completely back it up for you. And with a click of a button, you can make a local copy that takes five minutes and you've got it on your local machine. But Correct. God forbid you come to the office and there's been a fire and everything was in the, in the, in the file drawers. Like you haven't lost anything. You just go down to Best Buy. Your laptop's a, a, a piece of bacon 
at this point. You go to Best Buy, buy a computer right there, whatever they have in stock, plug it in, log in, and all your stuff's right back where you were. Right. And, and from those HR point of view, right, because sometimes they want the HR or legal once that original copy of that was signed, blah, blah, blah. We're not necessarily saying get rid of that, but you can leave that in the office. And then if you do have that natural disaster, you kind of deal with it then, but you have a, a, the scanned version of that in case you kind of need to need access to it. But really, you and I are both showing our age when we talk about it these days. Every court in the land will take a digital signature or a scanned copy of it for the most part, unless it's like a title to a large piece of property or something like that. I, I just I'm purely doing that because of my at t background and large corporations want to protect that hard copy, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, but truthfully, I mean, now we know or we talked about the fact that even with these basic things like Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive and these other things, you have all this information at your fingertips on your phone. Correct. And I wanted to talk to you and get your opinion because you talk to a lot of folks as well. What do you feel about drivers having apps and getting access to information while they're on the road or when they're do, waiting for a sword or something like that? Are you a fan of drivers being connected into the mothership digitally? So, yes. So my general philosophy is, right, you should push stuff down to the source of the information, right? The driver is the best source of information for truck inspections, right? That, that pre-trip, post-trip, um, maybe not the truck inspections. We, we can kind of table that for potentially managers weekly. But if it's a day-to-day -day task in, in, along that truck, along with that driver, um, even trip logs, I would argue it really should be pushed down to the source of the data, right? There's nobody knows better where that driver drove than the driver himself or herself. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was visiting with a contractor not too long ago, and I said, what are you all doing? Because it was like this fire drill they were going through. I said, oh, it's that time of the week when we're trying to get all the IVMRs from all the drivers. And I was like, those are papers still? And they were still doing paper. They didn't want to go digital. Uh, I was like, wow. I mean, like, what a pain in the butt. I mean, because it's a compliance requirement. You got a driver who's out on the road doing something and you're trying to get this week's IVMR. And now they've got to swing by your office to give you the IVMR or mail it to you. God help you. Yeah. And, and, and again, we're, we're not saying, right, push it all on the driver day one. Um, no different than you, you're kind of migrating your, your business to digital, you're going to migrate their experience into that digital world. And the biggest pushback are old fogies like us, right. Who, who have anchored in their ways of, of doing it their own way. And as you kind of push some of that stuff on the driver, again, if you push 90% of your drivers to entering their own driver logs or doing their own pre-trip and post-trip whip around inspections. You're dealing with that last 10%. Well, you just saved yourself 90% of the work. And for that last 10%, right, for, for, for right, the, the long-term employees that um, you're, you're kind of catering to a little bit, then you do it for, on their behalf, right? You, 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 can, you kind of still say, this is the policy for the company. And then you help them kind of complete that policy, right, with the manager's help or with your help. Yeah, I've heard funny stories, though, where, where people push back and they say, the last thing I want to do is push more work on the driver, push more work on the driver. And I agree with it. I don't think you should create more work for the driver. But if you have a way that they can take their phone and go boop, 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 done and get rid of the forms that they have to fill out. Correct. You're not pushing more work. You're just making it digital for them if the app is okay. And I would argue that most drivers already keep their own driver log. They want to know what they drove so they know what they get paid at the end of the week, right? So if you give them a digital version of that driver log or on the flip side, right, you do a digital version of the pre-trip inspection and they take a picture of the, the connection before they drive off the lot and it gets disconnected because, right, a, a hardware failure, they want to be able to go back, right? It's no different than that Linux camera of moving it to the cloud. As soon as it's in the cloud, it's documented for legal purposes, right? So that you can pull that back out and, and save your butt on that disconnect. 
And, and I heard a story not too long ago about FedEx telling a contractor that their driver had damaged a trailer. Correct. And they had had this happen before they went to whip around. But now that they were on whip around, they literally went and said, well, here are the pictures of the trailer before we left the yard. And that ended that conversation in a heartbeat. <laughs> Correct. <Right? laughs> and, and I suspect knowing FedEx, they went to whoever brought it there and then tried to stick the damage on them. And hopefully they had whip around too. Um, but I mean, it, it really does make life easy. And Yes, there are certain drivers who the last thing they want to do is interact with a phone. Okay, I get it. I, I, I don't like using my phone. I'm an old fuddy-duddy too. But think about the next driver you hire who's 28 years old who goes, mm -hmm. what? You're not digital? Like, Well, but, but I even argue the, the fuddy-duddies that we are, right? We still use Facebook. We still use, right, email. And these apps are designed for that. They're all using the same technology that, that's tied into that, right? I mean, we've all done Facebook posts to push a picture, right? You, you put a picture and you put comments. That's no different than using a whip around app and taking a, right? Putting a comment and taking a picture. I think the bad rap comes when people push crappy software out there, vector. <clears throat> <laughs> And, and people hate it because it doesn't do what it's supposed to do and it's not designed well. And so it's just creating more of a headache than the problem that you're trying to solve. Right. right. Um, but there are some good tools out there and, and we're going to talk a little bit about those. Um, what about expecting your managers to interact digitally? Right. Right. So this is where I think there's a balancing act for managers versus drivers and what apps you push to them. And again, kind of the, the speed. Right, you need to be able to make sure your drivers and managers are comfortable with what they have, kind of before you push the next next round. Right um, now, I have some clients that have for like the whip around, they have the drivers doing the inspections, and I have some other clients that said, "Hey, we're, we are we really only do these inspections once a week, or if we do it once a week, we're good enough." So they kind of just push the the managers to do kind of the the complete once a week truck inspections and then maybe they're trying to go in the future they'll add the drivers doing a pre and post trip inspection yeah that makes sense i mean in in the neat thing about whip rounds you can customize it and you can say look this is the short form and we expect this done on every trip photo the trailer Correct. photo the connection move on with your life and this is the what we expect daily and this is what we you know you, you can tailor that thing to do what you want down to the level of skip this question. This question's optional, that kind of thing. Correct. Um, so it, it, that's a neat piece of software if you use it right. And a lot of people just take it out of the box and don't realize that they can completely twist it into any balloon animal they want. Um, I heard somebody who used it to create a new during COVID cab inspection to make sure that the place got clean before the driver left it for the next driver. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and, and it's very easy to set that up. Um, but, but I think it's, a, if you really need, you, you need to kind of assess where your own drivers are, where your own managers are and their capabilities. Right. And, and I would assess it by more of the 80% of your drivers and 80% of your managers where they are um, versus the last 20%. Right. Cause you maybe still have a truck driver out there with a flip phone. Flip phones are not going to be able to work too well in these apps. <laughs> um, that's not to say that that's a bad driver. It just means, Hey, I want that driver on the road. I'm going to help that driver do their task for them. Right. You may have an older dri driver that you may still help with hookups, right. They come by, you help them locally with the, the hookups to get them back on the road. Um, it, it's no different on that considerations of, I want to look out for my, my long-term employees but I also want on the new ones, I kind of want to start moving towards offloading stuff for me. And there, and a lot of that's a balancing act. Um, but I mean, the more you can push down, you, the more accurate your data gets, the more timely you get, and the less work is actually at the, on the office side. Having worked on projects uh, in my IT life, my nerd life, um, with trying to implement digital solutions. Uh, 
One of the things that I think is very important for people to understand when you start pushing apps on drivers and or managers to use, you have to recognize that all of us human beings, if we're going to be forced to use something, we want to get something out of it, mm -hmm. right? And the worst thing you can do is say, you have to fill in this form and hit submit before you do this. And then you never see anything of benefit from having done that. And it might be as simple as we're getting rid of the paper, but it might be something as simple as, hey, you can come back and review your information later if it's useful to you. Correct. Um, it was really easy for Google to get the world to adopt to Google Maps because who hasn't been in an area they're unfamiliar with? They put the address in and Google Maps turns around and gives you turn by turn directions to get there. Like that, you don't have to force people to use it. <laughs> people Correct. jump. Um, and uh, if you've got an app that's, uh, you know, allowing drivers to put information about their trips in, well, heck, let them pull that information back up when it's pay time to make sure they got paid correctly, right? Agreed. Um, and so think about it from the standpoint of what's the driver going to get out of doing this and using this technology. And the more you can, more icing on that cake you can put, the easier it is for folks to swallow it. Correct. A, a, a lot of these apps, right? You got to look at what's in it for you and how's the drop managers and drivers getting benefits out of it. Yep. Right. And, and every, every, to do it properly, every piece in the chain needs to kind of get a benefit out of it. Yep. Yep. Uh, I forget where I read it. We were, I was talking with someone about it the other day, I think in another video, everybody's favorite radio station, WIIFM, what's in it for me? Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> Tune into that. If you're having resistance getting something adopted and more often than not, you find out that you haven't answered that question to their satisfaction. Correct. Um, so all of that said, in terms of the argument for going digital, for pushing information out to the people who need it most and collecting information from those who know it the best. Correct. Um, can we talk a little bit about how people can sort of understand how the, the broader ecosystem of technology so, so, works? So one last thing on that, I kind of want to touch before we kind of move off of the managers and their apps. Um, Really, the, the target there I recommend is don't skip skimp on computer accessories. And, and where I'm talking about there is yeah, if you're doing a microphone or, it, it, or even like a Bluetooth headset, right? I think we're all in big business realize a good Bluetooth headset is worth every penny. Um, a lot of the computer accessories, they're not much more, right? We're talking, I can buy a, a cheap mouse for 30 bucks that my hand cramps around, right? And every time they use a computer, right? The hand cramps and, and, and they get muscle pains. Or I can buy a really nice one, kind of a top of line for 80 bucks that will outlast the cheap one, right? Probably multiple times over. And it makes a big deal to that manager to give them that, that nicer accessory because every time they use a computer, it's easier to use, it, it works better right? It, it fits their big hand or her big hand, right? That type of stuff. Um, no different than you get, right? Buying a, the correct Bluetooth headset or, or the white light like, webcam or keyboard. Um, really get that, the right accessories out there so that it's not just dis, dis, distracting from them to getting their job done. Uh, agreed. Although I am a bit of a contrarian on some accessories, just so you've heard me say it. I could spend, I, I, I like the necklace Bluetooth headset because when I'm not using it, it just dangles around my, my neck. And you can buy these things for like 95 bucks. And I've tried one of the $95 ones and yes, it's nicer, but they break and, and die. The batteries die and other things happen just as quick. And I get these for 20 bucks and I keep an extra one in my drawer at all times. So as soon as this one starts acting up, out the door it goes and I throw another one. I don't care about the cost. So sometimes... You can find no, no, it. Correct. It, it, yes, th th there is a balance. Um, the one I would specifically recommend on the computer accessories is more of the Logitech, Logitech mice. If you have a big hand, get a big mouse. Um, don't squeeze your hand around the little itty bitty balls, um, the itty bitty mice, the travel mice. Just carry the big mouse and be done with it. Uh, for those of you who don't know Jeff personally, Jeff, how tall are you? I'm 6'5". 
six five, and I've seen him, and I think he could easily palm a basketball. Yes. And and I mean, just yeah. So, <laughs> well, I, I've even gone to the weird shape vertical mouse um, just to make it easier to to avoid carpal tunnel. And listen, you're working with computers all day. You Correct. should. And the more that you push drivers, managers, whoever, to be working with computers, definitely make their lives easier. And if that means a bigger monitor or two monitors, it's so cheap these days. I couldn't agree more with you on that. Correct. Um, so, yeah, excellent point. Um, I, I remember going to one contractor's office and their poor dispatcher was working off of a single 19-inch monitor. And I said, WTF? And before we were done that day, we'd run down to Best Buy and purchase three 27-inch monitors. And <laughs> yes. I was the happiest <laughs> ditch batcher on the planet because she was sitting there trying to flip between five different tabs at all times. And I was like, how are you getting your job done? And she looked at me like, I'm not. Um, right. And, and now she can put it all across all three screens yeah. and look at all of them all, all at the same time. Yep. Yep. One screen was for all the incoming and outbound text messages and email messages. Another was for the schedule. Another was for the status board with the, the ELD, you know, location info. That was an easy fix. And the whole thing was like $350 to solve that problem. Correct. Um, so um, I wanted to bounce something off you, Jeff, to, to see if you agree, because I think it's something that a lot of folks don't understand about when they're looking for technology solutions, sort of the the layers of the cake, because I feel like there's a bit of a wedding cake shape to the way the technology market works. Um, bear with me. I'll yep. tie this to wedding cake somehow, I think. When you're looking at something very specific, like, hey, you're a FedEx ground line haul contractor, right? There are very specific things in that business that are unique to being FedEx ground line haul as a contractor, right? Correct. But you don't need an email system written for FedEx ground line haul contractors. You Correct. need an email system, right? So there's basic technology that applies on the lowest, widest tier of this, this cake, right? That, that you can buy. And the good news is because the companies who make it can sell it to millions and millions of people, it's like a dollar or two per user or $5 per user per month for an amazing broad array of tools that you can buy. Correct. The next layer of the cake for the contractor, I would say, is look for solutions in the general transportation and trucking field, right? Mm -hmm. Because these are things that are generally about trucking and um, whip around. You've mentioned a few times in this call, we've mentioned that's a great example that was designed for trucking generally. Right. Correct. Yep. Um, I think we've talked about uh, Fleet IO, right? Yep. Uh, is Fleet Manager another one? Um, I think that that's another. I've, I, yeah, that sounds familiar. I've not dealt with them directly. But there's a lot of things, good software that's been written for transportation generally. Well, j j just like right, PeopleNet and Omnitrax fall in this category, right? It, sure. it is for all trucking. They provide services, right? So they can they can kind of they're not the $5 a month to provide all their services, right? They're, they have a smaller market than the world, but they have a, right. They're targeting the entire trucking industry. Per the DOT, there's 1.5 to 2 million trucks on the road in the U S alone. So why wouldn't they go after that bigger market? It makes Correct. sense. And they can do it at a scale that makes it a lot cheaper than if it was a very small market. Um, in fact, I think Whip Around got its start in New Zealand. Oh, interesting. I think, I think it was started in New Zealand for trucking there. And some other folks caught wind of it and it spread because lo and behold, a pre and post trip inspection is pretty much conceptually the same all around the world. Right. Correct. Well, uh, if not, it's all customizable. So what does it matter? But then you get into, all right, the FedEx line haul space, right? If someone writes a solution to automate creation of your monthly maintenance reports on the FedEx form, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a big market for that because it's not used by Amazon. It's not used by UPS. Like you Correct. have to start looking for more tailored solutions. Now, interestingly, I think like Fleet.io, they actually have an add-on 
or it's a feature to do the MMRs because so many FedEx customers use, use them. But a lot of their customers would never touch that feature. Correct. Because they're not in the FedEx space. Um, but the, the, the more narrow the focus, because the more specialized it is, what ends up happening with a software company is they have to make a living on fewer and fewer potential customers, right? Correct. Um, and you, you and I live in that space. Mm-hmm. We're in that very defined niche vertical. And, and I'm sure you get it and I get it. People complain about our price point. They say, yes. well, Microsoft can give me te- Microsoft Teams for five bucks a month and they give me all these features. How come you've got to charge more than that? And I'm like, well, because there's only 17, if, if that 16,000 trucks in the entire line hall space, we got to make a living on that in order to keep building software for you. Correct. Well, it, conveniently, all of us go to work for the same reason as to make money. Right. Right. Whether whether I'm I'm running a FedEx line hall contractor or uh, we're writing software for them, right? We're kind of there to to end by the end of the day, kind of right, make money and feed our family. Right. And uh, you and I could probably go work for Microsoft or Google and make a lot more than we're making trying to cater to the line hall space. Correct which is counterintuitive. Why do we do it? <laughs> I do it because I love this space. I think uh, every one of my customers is entrepreneurial and hardworking. And uh, I, I'd rather do that than do customer support for my mother, if you know what I'm saying. Um, yes. But uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the different things. We've mentioned um, uh, Fleet IO, Whip Around. Um, those are in the broader trucking space. What are some of your favorite things that you've seen if you were thinking about software that any contract <laughs> should be looking at and evaluating? So one is around the, the, the advertising recruiting space. I know there's a lot of different options there. Um, I, I don't deal with them on a daily basis, um, but that's really actually more focused on the overall trucking business, not necessarily FedEx, because a lot of that is managing, right? depending on which one you get, right, it automatically, right, plays around the word. So you bump to the top of Indeed's shop, uh, right, posting list. It automatically refreshes. There are several ones out there for that recruiting space um, that, are, that are targeted at that overall trucking market. Fat J, now GoToro, that's a big name in this. Yep. Place. And they're not FedEx specific. They are broader transportation, of course. Correct. Um, but then you have tailored folks like like M3 Traffic that are doing very specific things with Facebook ads for FedEx contractors. I mean, they've, they've picked those, those waters to target. Um, yep. I did a conversation with Black Raven, um, uh, with Brian Monsey uh, the other day, which uh, is going to be on another video. Um, and, and he's doing more of a service approach, uh, but he's absolutely focusing on FedEx line hall contractors and their unique needs. Yeah. Um, but... Think about IVMRs, for example. You go back six or seven years ago, it was all paper. Um, and now there's a number of different vendors. The biggest is, of course, TrucksBuy, you know, Flint Works firm. And they're doing a wonderful job. They're taking advantage of the technology of the ELDs to capture all that and automatically complete the IVMRs. But there's enough room for two or three or four vendors to do those in this space. Correct. And, and I... I've talked to a couple of them, um, kind of trying to support some of my clients. Um, they all do varying, de- they all provide the minimum set, but it also depends on your hub and how specific your hub is on that set to see what capabilities you need on that. Um, what I mean by that is um, I know certain hubs that if you do a IVMR across the month boundary, um, right, IVMRs are supposed to stop at the, right, so your week-long IVMR goes across the month boundary. Your IVMR is supposed to stop at the month and restart on, on for the next month to FedEx specs. Depending on your IVMR provider, they may or may not split it that way. So you may have to either split it yourself or kind of shop around um, another one is that IVMR providers, not all of them provide the, what was it called? The description field on that form, the far right field that says, hey, I took I-95 to I-20, that type of stuff. Um, depending on the provider, I know TruckSpy provides both those. Um, that's not an endorsement for TruckSpy. I'm just saying in the talks with them, 
they have provided, they do provide those. Um, I'm saying check them out and, and do a trial with them before you kind of commit to them whole hog. Um, and that is also not to say you can't do trials of multiple at the same time. Sure. Right. All, all you're doing is you're, you're giving them access to the GPS feed from my, the Omnitracks or PeopleNet. And you could easily provide that for multiple vendors and then kind of do a bake-off. Um, and, and I know that uh, I think IVMRs are not a FedEx specific thing. I mean, haven't general trucking firms who go interstate had to do this for a long time? So my understanding is the IVMR is a form that feeds up as because you're under the DOT for, for FedEx. Right. If you're doing your own forms, you only kind of refer, I think you report them quarterly. Okay. Um, so I've talked to one client that said, hey, they actually got streamlined because they got away from the IVMR from FedEx. Um, oh, they, they got they got one or two hubs that were kicked out of FedEx because FedEx didn't type into their system fast enough. Right. They, they sent the IVMR every week, but for whatever reason, FedEx didn't put it into their system fast enough and they got kind of get kicked out of FedEx. FedEx fuel out of those hubs um, and they started doing their own for those hubs and they realized it was so much easier. They kind of went completely external. Um, I, I don't know the effect on kind of the fuel reimbursements. Um, so I, I'm not kind of willing to do a business recommendation going down that path, but I'm saying people have looked at it and they've, they've chosen that path over doing inside fueling. Um, so I, I Right, maybe something to be considered. Okay, yeah, and and you know, like I, I know with the, the with Flint's IVMR system, one of the things they're constantly tackling is uh, something called geofencing. Um, and so, if you go to Terminal One Six Five, Flint's system knows where Terminal One Six Five is. So when the truck enters it, it knows to create an entry that the truck got to One Six Five, and then when you leave there, it knows you've left there. Um, but with all of the different bump locations and everything else constantly changing, it's like a game of whack-a-mole to keep track of that. And that's one of the tough things that they do very well. Um, but it's a never ending battle because they're always adding these different bump locations and changing them and that kind of thing. And what was a bump location at a Sitco in Kansas uh, last week is no longer a bump location, but someone's filling up there and the IVMR gets all confused. Right. And, and that's, um, I've, I've played that whack-a-mole game and I'm still whacking the moles, um, to kind of bake that into my product. Um, and, and that's something that we kind of, right. It affects IVMR, it affects even trip logs to figure out, right. What is that bump location or does that bump location move down the street because there's a car convention at the shopping mall or something along those lines. And look, to be fair, this is not meant to be an advertisement for our products, but Ebo Pro is doing some really cool things in the line haul space. Do you want to share just a little bit about what that is for folks who don't know about it? Yep. So we kind of we do the back office um, payroll services for FedEx line haul contractors, kind of pay your way and then kind of keep everybody compliant. Um, we just launched scheduling for kind of specifically targeted for line haul contractors right? Multiple runs in a day, um, team runs that kind of span, right? W one shift that spans the entire week, um, right? Drag and drop features kind of allows you to kind of pre-build it off your A1 um, and then kind of end on end-to-end -end management of trucks and routes and drivers and like your FedEx availability kind of all baked in there and tracking. And Holytech, Right. Also is, is kind of one of our one of my competitors, um, but can provide they have a lot of nice reporting tools um, around the, the FedEx settlement and for payroll. And I'll go and turn it over to you to kind of do a once over on yours. Yeah, there, there's certainly some overlap in what the two of us do, um, but I think there's enough differences that we're not head to head competitors. And I think uh, it really depends on what the customer is looking for. One might be a better fit for the other. Um, we're very much a self-serve tool. We try to give deep 
data analysis and, and reporting capabilities, pulling information from wherever we can get it. And we've automated payroll for folks who want to do it themselves. Um, and we're going in some interesting directions with mobile apps and scheduling and dispatch in the next uh, six to 12 months. So we're excited about that. But really, we're about trying to find, are you getting paid for everything you owed? And if, if you are, great. If not, we'll give you tools to get it. And then giving you the tools to figure out where you might be leaking money out of your organization, you know, things like fuel optimization and fuel analysis and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's, that's really our focus is uh, maximizing what you make, maximizing what you keep, and uh, hopefully cutting down the number of hours you have to spend doing that every week. Correct. And then uh, out of consideration, just kind of giving you guys, uh, there is also a third person kind of in the space specifically targeted towards um, FedEx line haul contractors, which is my ground force. Um, and that's run by Tim Goff, who's actually a contractor, Oscar Mike, uh, down here. And, and for those who think we're line hauls an inbred world, Tim, Jeff, and I live and work in a 15-mile circle. Correct. <laughs> we're the three fools who wanted to be in this market. <laughs> we're all right close to each other. And we've had lunch. We get together. Um, I haven't seen my ground force, uh, so I can't really speak to its exact features, um, but it's out there and uh, I'm sure it's good stuff. Tim's good people. Yes. I, again, I have not, I've not speak to it or used it or um, worked heavily with it. So I'm not, I can't comment on either. Um, but I, I don't know, j just shifting gears a little bit here, Jeff, one of the things that I find interesting and we've touched on it before um, you and I both work very closely with a lot of line haul contractors. Mm -hmm. And as techies, we have to understand their business to be useful to them, right? Correct. And what I find fascinating is none of them are really big enough to have dedicated tech people. And we're like their surrogate CTOs. I mean, I've Correct. even been called by some contractors who needed help getting their Wi-Fi to work. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, which printer should I buy? Uh, and I'm, I'm not encouraging people to use us as that, but the fact is just like at home, you might have a local person, your neighbor, who's good with tech, who can help you with tech stuff. If that's not your thing, having a partnership with a company like Jeff's or mine, mm -hmm. there's value in knowing that you can pick up the phone and get tech advice that may not be about their, their particular software, but that can help steer you into doing the right things. I mean, it's just like we're trying to do with these videos. Do you experience that yourself? Do you, do you get those kinds yeah. of calls? Oh yeah. So, so I talked to multiple clients around, right. Kind of, well, what are your other clients doing? Right. In, this is my thought and what are your other clients or are they getting this pushback or that type of stuff? And while we, I don't share any of those and I was giant, we don't share the, the specifics, we give the general feeling of the market, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's more tailored while yes, you could go paste, post it on the, the Facebook groups. There's, you get a lot more, interesting responses in the Facebook groups than you get from, from John and I. John and I will kind of get you to the point you down the right road and the right door um, and maybe even open that door for you. Um, whereas the Facebook groups go, well, you go east or you can go north or you can go south or you can go west, right? I mean, they go, well, of course I can go any direction. I mean, and, and that's where I see a lot of the benefits of Right. Being that custom solution for you guys. Right. At coming in there, providing what you need, listening to what how you run your business versus the general line hall contractor and meeting your specific needs. The. Um, there's a lot of people in this world who see their accountant once a year and they give them a shoebox full of information and say, prepare my taxes. <laughs> And accountants would love it if they would get a call periodically during the year so that they say, hey, I'm thinking of doing this so that if they're kind of driving the car off the cliff, they can stop them before they get too close to the edge, right? Correct. Or worse, before they hit the bottom of the cliff. And a lot of people understand that as a person, we have kind of a personality disorder, us techies do. We want to help. Yes. <laughs> and oftentimes that means. Or, or even, um, even, even worse, we want to help. But we're not willing to say that because we're introverts. Right. 
<laughs> um, and, At least I'll, I'll freely admit to be an inver- introvert. And I, I see so many contractors who either don't know to ask the questions or don't feel confident enough to, to reach out and ask questions. And it's really often the case with technology that uh, to use the Navy expression, a little rudder far from shore is much better than a lot of rudder near the rocks. And, you know, reach out and talk to us. Uh, Even if you don't want to call and talk to Jeff about Ebo Pro or me about Haldi Tech, if you're talking about how do you run your business better and take advantage of technology, we'd love to have those conversations. Yes, correct. Oh, it's no different than you don't talk to your accountant in January about how to save on taxes for last year, right? right? You need to talk to your accountant this year about how to save taxes for, for this year and then right, implement it and do the, start doing those changes this year before you kind of jump the, the year mark and it's too late. Right. Yeah. I thought I'd save on paperwork by paying for everything in cash. What do you mean I can't deduct it now? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that would have, that would have been an easy one to solve, you know. Um, and no, you you do not need to be on Linux if you're a contractor and you're not familiar with it. Correct. <laughs> Even though the computer's cheaper. Um, so Jeff, uh, we've been going at this for a little while. What would you like to talk about before we wrap it up? As as, as the end of part two here. Um, the only other one to add on that is. In addition to kind of, right, we'll be glad to help you with kind of the, the overall tech support questions. Um, and I would even argue back office FedEx line hall questions um, because that's kind of where our niche is. Um, there are other contractors out there to kind of help you with Omnitrax or I think PeopleNet has some contractors out there on how to manage and how to maintain the ELD hours of service, right, to, to avoid those flags. Um, there may be some Phrolytics or, or Insight, um, I'm sorry, in, Infinite Eye around those on, on how to set those up and get those going. Um, even Whip Around, I, I know the Whip Around account owners vary, the, the account reps vary in quality, but that doesn't mean you couldn't go either talk to a, a, a person to say, hey, right, in, in your own hub to say, I see you're using whip around. Can I get with you and, and maybe and, right, take you out to a nice dinner and you walk me through how to set it up, right? Because once you set up a lot of these apps, running them is a whole lot easier than setting them up. And, and, and there is a learning curve to set them up. But once you set them up, a lot of these kind of fall into a domino mode where you just keep pushing the same button and, and you kind of get the, the nice results at the end. Because I think you're, you're right, Holiday Tech, your app, and just like Ebo, right, kind of once you set it up, it starts running on its own. And you have to tune it up here and there. But for the most part, it's running by itself. And you're just feeding data along the way. Yeah, we focus very much on making it that Staples Big Red Easy button as much Correct. as we're able. Um, because we were told by customers, you don't do that, you can use it. Yes, I even have the big easier easy button. See, yeah, it's a good design. Pairing. Yes, yes. Um, so <laughs> you weren't uh, expecting that, were you? <laughs> no. <laughs> so look, with that said, um, I want to thank you, Jeff, for taking time out of your day. Uh, I, I I know I'm getting value out of talking to you, and I hope that the folks watching are as well. Um, uh, I have a few things I want to mention before we wrap up. Yep, go ahead. Uh, the Line Hall Summit. Uh, Jeff and I are both going to be at the Line Hall Summit in July in Dallas. We're going to have the info down below. If you don't know about it, you absolutely should be on. It's going to be a phenomenal opportunity to learn, to meet the different vendors, network with other contractors, and a good time to boot. Um, and uh, Facebook group. Uh, if, you, if you don't know, there's a FedEx Line Hall Facebook group dedicated just for line hall folks, not the bigger one for mostly PND, but this is just line hall. Uh, well over 400 folks on there, extremely helpful, buying and selling routes, trucks, helping figure out driver recruiting. Great place to ask questions. Jeff and I are both on it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for those who are podcast listeners, 
Uh, this is going to be streamed to podcasts. So if you're driving down the road and just want the audio version, you can get that too. There'll be a link down there. Um, and uh, normally I get yelled at by, by my partner, Matt, for not mentioning what we do, but we already talked about what we do. And we've talked a bit about Ebo Pro, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, Jeff has a phenomenal solution. If you haven't taken a close look at it, you should. Uh, I'm not going to toot my own horn that loudly, but I've been told by my customers that we have a pretty good solution and we're always happy to show it to you. Um, and, and I would argue both of us offer free trials, so you can easily try out both of them and, and see which one best works for, for your company. Yep. And, and we're easy to talk to and neither of us have a sales department, so we're not going to stick you with a slick salesperson. You can no. have one of us. So. Yes. Yes. You, you'll, get a, you'll get an engineer or a software developer doing a sales pitch which you so, can more laugh at us than point and laugh than, than actually feel the pressure. Yeah. Instead of high pressure, it's more of a face palm going, yeah, is this person <laughs> doing this? Um, but uh, if you think of things you'd like Jeff and I to talk about, we're trying to do this as a value add for you to help you understand technology, because I know there's a lot of folks who are not familiar with it. Please reach out to us individually or together in the comments section, whatever. Um, we're going to provide our contact info. Your feedback is what's guiding us on what to talk about next. That's how we decided here for this next one, because of feedback from folks who saw the first. Mm -hmm. So uh, please keep the comments coming, uh, good or bad. We're trying to learn from them and, and be of service to you. So thank you. And Jeff, thanks again for being here. I'll let you have the final sign yep. off if you like. Yep. Uh, yep. Thanks for thanks for having me and, and thanks for talking. Thanks for dialing in, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.